Welcome to Snooze with Sam. Scottish sleep stories, meditations, and ASMR sometimes. This week I've written a story, like many others I've written before, set on the Isle of Skye, or at least inspired by the Isle of Skye. There are lots of other places in Scotland that are incredible to climb. However, obviously having lived there, I've had plenty of opportunities to summit quite a few of the coolins running up and down the spine of the island itself. And so naturally it's very easy to be inspired by them. My mind is full of imagery from all sorts of weather whilst ascending these, ranging from the thickest fog and cloud to howling winds and rains and storms, right through to completely crystal clear blue sky days where you can see for hundreds of miles around when you're up that high. Although I don't live there anymore, I still find myself back in that state of mind, sometimes wishing I was at the top of these mountains. Now there are two distinctly named ranges on sky, and that is the Red Coolins and the Black aptly named for their differentiating tones of colours, but the most famous of all is the Black Coolin Ridge. Famed for its relatively inaccessible portions. Skye may not be a very large island, but it holds some deep and dark secrets. Yet it is no secret whatsoever that the Black Coolins especially hold within them some of the toughest climbing you can do at any level. So this inspired this story as you take to the mountain tops, having camped up halfway, and the morning after you make for the summit. So, when you are quite ready and comfortable, lie back, take a nice deep breath, and enjoy this story. This story is called The Wild Highland Mountains. Battling the Black Coolin Ridge can be some of the most treacherous adventures one can undertake. Out here, the weather can be so temperamental and changeable that even the most experienced climbers can find themselves in a spot of bother. But this morning, 
with the sunshine beaming on your face, warming your neck and shoulders. The only apparent threat is of a few wispy clouds occasionally blocking that lovely sunshine. Through an early morning mist, you traversed and ascended, fueled by stove-brewed coffee and oats. You always like to make a keen start. hoping to catch a sunrise at a particularly stunning location. Having camped on a small ridge somewhere on the slopes of Skur Jerag, The night was less than comfortable and hairy by most folk's standards. Yet, with enough shelter from the elements, you were able to put yourself at ease and sleep well despite the altitude. Your wee one-man tent did the job perfectly, blocking the gusting wind and occasionally light Atlantic rain. So you woke, feeling fairly fresh and full of energy. It always takes a moment or two to remember where you are when you stir from a wild camp. and the thrill of acknowledging the 2,000 foot reality never gets old. Unzipping your tent, the first blast of fresh, wild mountain air seemed to physically stir your soul. Such is the feeling of freedom, adventure and liberation. Sometimes it even brings a little mist to your eyes. Blocking the worst of the breeze with your body, you set up your wee gas stove and brought some water to the boil, ready for the all-important caffeine boost. topped up with vigour and Italy's finest espresso. Hydrated 
and ready to continue your journey. You promptly stored your possessions, ensuring they were all firmly strapped down. The last thing you wanted is for anything to go missing from your rucksack during the climb. Losing Luigi's finest roast or your bananas didn't even bear thinking about. The first hour or so was a tough scramble, setting the theme for the day ahead. Occasionally taking to your hands to steady your progress. You picked paths up the craggy rocks, merely focusing on the next waypoint and the next, unaware of how much altitude you were actually gaining. Glancing behind your shoulder every now and again, pausing for breath, you cared to admire your progress. But the thick mist and fog clung to the cooling range like soapy suds against your body. Peering up into the sky, though disorienting as it was, you spied a glimpse of extra light way up high. The fog wasn't all too high. That was the paler blue skies somewhere up above. It was a clear day and you'd soon break through this mist. Or else the sun would burn it off once it rose. Pushing onwards for a few minutes at a time. Every muscle in your body already protesting. Your legs and your gut sensed change up ahead. The steep and rocky path on which you followed, if you could even call it that, began to wind and weave even tighter, turning back on itself as it zigzagged 
up the near vertical face of the mountain. With a big sigh, sizing up the next stage, you clapped and dusted off your hands and dug in your boots. You pulled and pushed your way higher, keeping your body close to the rock face, not looking down or thinking of how high up you were. The mist aided that illusion at the very least, obscuring your altitude from view. Up and up you climbed, determined and driven to break through the consuming cloud. And almost without realising, with your head down and eyes focused on each approaching grip point. The mist around you suddenly melted and the steps began to level out just a little. Gasping, panting and quads searing. You pulled yourself upright and trudged up the slope, which tailed off slowly but consistently. And then there it was. like a veil lifted from the face of a bride. The sky opened up overhead to the richest and deepest early morning blue. Nearing the horizon, this blue phased and blended into pastel orange and fiery reds as the rapidly rising sun broke the seal on the horizon. All around you, down every side of the mountain, the mist dwelled at a lower altitude like a pool of smoke. You felt like you were in heaven. A million miles in the sky, looking down on the stratosphere.
the lumps and bumps of the mist below reminded you of a plush hotel duvet with the finest down feathers. And every imperfection and ripple caught the light from the east. It was views like these which felt so surreal. To call it a photograph or liken it to a watercolour didn't even do it justice. As far as the eye could see, at a point which could have been the ocean or a false cloud floor. A sudden flash of calypso orange sun surfaced with a rippling shimmer. The mountain all around you bathed in this life-giving light, totally changing the atmosphere of your surroundings. What were treacherous, dangerous, intimidating, and challenging crags gave way to soft, comforting and soothing peaks which felt like home beneath the sunrise. Your face felt every ounce of available shine, rejoicing in the warmth it gave on this fresh day. Closing your eyes, taking in lungful after lungful of the finest mountain air, you felt born again. You felt on top of the world. With the sunlight higher and daylight now taking full hold of the sky, you trek along the ridge of the black coolins with the air around you getting warmer and warmer. Loose rocks and scree beneath your feet keep the terrain challenging. 
But you hop, skip, and scramble over it, like a mountain goat born for this land. Once you're up this high, each summit you happen upon only feels like a short sprint up to the top, with small bows in the ridge in between them. Nevertheless, every cairn you place your hand upon feels like a victory and achievement. You could live up here forever. In the distance, to the south, the mist is beginning to lift off the earth below, with the stronger sun rays penetrating even the thickest part. In these areas, you can see flecks of moorland, pinewood forests, and coastal shoreline. We prancing horses and white water waves lapping motionless in the distance. This is where you're headed, or at least where you'd like to be. But you are in no rush, seeing as the weather is so fine. But then, you glance over toward the northwest, in the direction of the Outer Hebrides, Lewis and Harris, and the Uists. Hovering around them, clinging to them in a deeper, moodier light, are some thick and sinister looking clouds, more than just a morning mist. They are still many miles away, as far as the eyes can see. But with your vantage point and the prevailing breeze from the north, you know that you may be facing this same weather in the not so distant future. You'd best be off the peaks by then. A 
a few hours pass as you leisurely journey along the highest ridges, making your way further south. With only the odd brave rock pipit and stratospheric airliners for company. It feels isolated up here, but in a very settling sort of way. Like there's no chaos in the world that could disturb this peace you're feeling. You are a million miles from anywhere and far away from the hustle and bustle of the world down below. Blissful is a word, you suppose. The gentle breeze brushes your face as it's whisked up from the slopes below, carrying mostly over your head. More and more of the ground at sea level is becoming visible as the misty isle sheds its overnight throw. You opt to skip one of the most extreme and craggy pinnacles aptly named the Inaccessible Pinnacle, or Inpin for short. As, realistically, it needs ropes and a penchant for abseiling to reach it. Perhaps if you were feeling a little more daring or you'd had just another couple of sips of coffee, then yes. But for today, you are happy living in your tranquil wee world. Hmm, but will it be tranquil for much longer? Carefully rounding the base of the inpin on the far side, cautiously sidestepping along the narrow and sheer path. The view north returns. Those Hebridean clouds, they are nearer, a fair bit nearer. The sky is divided into two parts laterally. The top
top half still a cobalt blue sky with only a few brushing clouds scattered over the far reaches of space. And the bottom half. A deep, murky abyss creating its own equally dark shadow on the water below. From the base of the clouds, pockets of downpour fall with intent onto the sea. It may look still and picturesque from where you are, but you know as well as anyone that being beneath that rain, up in these mountains, can spell disaster. What was visible becomes enveloped in a veil of water and downpour. And what was grippy to your hands and feet suddenly becomes anything but. Looking pensively out to sea. A firmer gust of wind almost confirms what approaches. You can smell it. The air is muggier damper and more turbulent. Time to get moving. Descending mountains may sound easier than climbing them. But most may agree, it's not quite so simple. Knees feel the brunt of the progress. There's a keenness to get down, so breaks are fewer and further between. And you can sometimes even take up a jog or even a run. But with it can come extreme muscle exhaustion and complacency. Being very cautious, you take the strain with your legs and control your movement as best you can. Scanning the slopes and paths ahead, looking much further ahead 
than where you are. Your peripheral vision can look after what's directly below you. The gradient of the slopes are much more obvious now you're looking straight down them. In every direction it seems, the world plummets towards a common point, far, far below. The jaggy ridges give way to steep gullies and glens, narrow glacial passes, and sheer scree shoots and runs. Zigzagging across the steepest parts of the slopes, trying to shallow them out. You let gravity do most of the work. Above and behind you, you can see the sky darken at the summit. It feels as though a monster is hot on your heels and you are running away from it. At the base of the mountain, to the south, the direction in which you are headed, the trees and the moors feel scarcely any closer. You know they are. It's just ill perspective. You estimate about an hour of steady descent. Goosebumps raise on your forearms. The air cools as the shade drapes across the land. The clouds and the rain are coming. The next part is a particularly loose and steep scree slope, which leads almost to the very base of the mountain. Rivers of small shale shards and apple-sized rocks flow from top to bottom. The result of hundreds of years worth of summit erosion and landslides. It looks daunting, 
but you are not worried. With a wee wry smile, you know that what is to come is your favourite part of all. Kneeling down, tucking in your boot laces, and ensuring they're as tight as is comfortable. You give yourself a wee shake in preparation for what you are about to do. with a committed step forwards, toes pointing directly downhill, you leap. And then, crashing through the scree, each boot sinking through the loose surface, you surf down the mountain, footstep after footstep. It feels as though you are walking in slow motion. Every step you take carries you a dozen or so feet down the coolings. Balance is key. Focus and foot planning are also integral. But confidence and the knowledge you can flow with the land rather than resist it is absolutely paramount. Again and again, your boots skim the rocks, sending flurries of debris down the slope with you. You try your best not to dislodge too much. But some is unavoidable. After a few moments, you're moving with such a pace. The wind rushes across your face and past your ears whistling continuously. It's unbelievable how much progress you can make in so little time.
you are sure you're at least matching the cloud's momentum, racing it to the finish line of the trees. Before long, the scree turns to scattered heather shrubs and long mountain grasses. And the gradient levels out steadily. Regaining your footing, you take up a steady walk on towards the tree line. In such little time, the air feels so much warmer and lusher, purely by being a few thousand feet nearer sea level. Exhausted from the descent, the effort of staying upright still takes plenty of energy. With a hot face, perspiration on your brow, and an admitted slight ache in the knees, you pause for a brief rest. Taking your water bottle from your backpack, you attempt to scatter the spinning stars from your head with a drink. In spite of this, you float in a wee world of your own for a moment, losing sense of time, staring into the middle distance. Something catches your eye, down by the tree line. But as quickly as it was there, it's now gone. You didn't make direct eye contact, but you thought you saw a flash of purple. Or was it? A sort of glow. You aren't sure. Strange either way. But you definitely saw something. Like it was floating in space but moving slowly. Or were you just imagining things? You are tired after all, and a bit spaced out from the effort of descent. Shaking your head, 
and stowing your bottle. You take another glance up behind you towards the summit of the Coolins. Those clouds are well and truly engulfing the peaks. Thank goodness you're not still up there. But again, if you don't find shelter soon, you may still find yourself a little colder and wetter than is ideal. Towards the sea and the pine trees you go. The afternoon has passed, and the evening looms ever closer. The forest will provide you with a place to set up camp for the night. You make a list of things in your mind of what you must do. Find a suitable tent spot. Locate some food, potentially fish. Collect kindling and firewood and refill your water. You wonder what else the evening will bring. You suppose you shall soon find out. Towards the sea and pine trees you go. The scent of salty sea breeze beckoning you ever closer.